Say what you will about Voltec. They never fail to amuse and intrigue with the bullshit that they pull at the expense of other people's rights, safety, sanity, and lives. Now I know what you're thinking, but if, what could Voltec possibly do in an amusement park that would ever measure up to what their vaults do? Ah, uh, such naive innocence. Well today, I'm going to show you exactly what they can do. Today we look at Voltec Among the Stars, an attraction inside the Galactic Zone in Nuka World. It's located at the south end of the park, and you'll have to fight your way through quite a lot of robots to get to it. Now let's gander. Well, the inside has gone to shit, like so many of the other rides present in Nuka World. Like many of those other rides, this one has many corpses present, thank Odin. To the immediate left of the entrance, we can find the welcome desk. Still serving it, all these centuries later, are these two people, though one of them has been a lazy bastard and sleeping on the job. As you can see, they are both quite dead, and it's likely that the initial bombing was the cause, as there's nothing to suggest that they were holed up here, no cans or anything like that, making it unlikely that they survived, as there is no other indication of the cause of their death. Across the way from them, just outside the main part of this attraction, we can find the remains of a woman, likely also a victim of Armageddon. It seems she was waiting here when the bomb hit, and the initial blast, or the radiation, killed her. There's also the chance the robots were involved in the deaths of some of the people here, but their issues are the topic of another video, and we don't have enough evidence to blame them for each death. Now, for the main attraction, I will let each announcement run before I talk about each section. Join us on a journey into the future, where humanity has set out on a new voyage of discovery, seeking adventure among the stars. So the whole premise of this area seems to be showing people how Voltec can contribute to the space program and help them live on other planets, which as we know was the initial goal of the whole project anyway. Also, yes, this weird starry thing did make me feel dizzy after prolonged exposure. Now, for the next section just after this starry hallway. Arcturus Prime, a frontier colony in the year 2291. Baked by the unrelenting sun, life on the surface of this remote, desolate world is all but impossible. So we hear the name Arcturus Prime, a colony meant to be set on what looks like Mars but could be any planet really, just over a decade from when we enter Nuka World. It's also here that we will get our first spacesuit for the Hobologists. The setup so far seems to be to show people that, without Voltec, they couldn't survive on these remote worlds. Just like people couldn't survive the nuclear apocalypse without them. Behind one of the rocks is a room. It contains a star core, and the second spacesuit for us. Now, we progress to the vault section of this attraction. But life is possible underground. Welcome to Vault Tech's Colony Arcturus. Welcome home. With vault modular construction techniques, new colonies can be established on almost any world in a matter of weeks. So welcome home. But, Jesus. I hate how they've ruined that phrase. So this entire attraction is to demonstrate how a vault colony would work. We have seen their modular construction in a few vaults, most notably Vault 88. Though I don't think it constructed as quickly as they claim they can. Then again, it is vault -Tec. They lie. Besides all that, it's a pretty standard vault entrance, albeit with a few fake doors. We can also find the next spacesuit in here. Now for the vault tech bullshit. These radiation scanners that many vaults had are part of the larger experiment here. We shall learn exactly what it is they do later. For now, you can see the distorted error, and they hum quite loudly. They also give us a status effect, decreasing our intelligence by one. Which is fine, as with Habology. Our minds have been increased far beyond a normal human's. Now, we head to the next section. And these are no dark bunkers. Your colony will feature beautiful, expansive common areas where you can relax in an Earth-like setting. Expansive is not the word I would use at all. 
So it appears vault wanted to beautify the place a bit. And from the dead trees, they surely succeeded. This room played no part in the experiment, by the way. The outer edges of the room seemed to have been utilized as a form of storage, based on the various boxes lying everywhere. I would also like to point out, the trees here have mutated fungus on them, which is odd given how secure this vault is, and that it is fairly deep underground. A possible cause could be the ventilation system, which does lead right into this room. Now, on to the residential area. Step into your spacious private suite, equipped with all the comforts of home. So as you can see, this was the living room, slash kitchen, of tomorrow, a today. Actually, by all standards, it could be so much worse, and still looks pretty good, even all these years later. Now while in here, you may notice strange noises in the background, and as you saw when we walked in, we were also affected in here as well. Well, that's because there is subliminal messaging of a sort going on here. The bedroom is also quite creepy, with a cheery looking Jangles the Moon Monkey. You know, if you're into that sort of thing. Heading into the room, set just off to the side of this living area, we can find a fusion and star core, and our first vault scientist. It looks like they die mid-meal, which could have resulted from any number of possibilities, from the bombs to someone killing them. Also, their arm is missing, so someone could have been in here to take the bit boy that they had, or Bethesda just reused a model. Now, for their terminal. So this terminal belonged to an L. Bateman, and details various experiments. Experiment 1 was on brainwave disruption and was what happened to us as we entered the vault and walked through the radiation scrubbers. It was done with an electromagnetic field and caused loss of motor control, temporary stupor and forgetfulness, which would suggest that a drop in more than intelligence should have occurred. No idea why they would even do this, but sure, vault -Tech. Experiment 2 covers what was done to us in the previous room, subliminal suggestion. Now it had many wanted side effects but what it does do to us is lower our charisma. I will now let you listen to some of the subliminal audio. I can't make out exactly what it's saying, but this nonsense is what affected a lot of people. Experiment 3 onwards is what is to come. Experiment 3 was hypnotic pheromones. Among its expected results is susceptibility of suggestion. Now since it is located right outside the subliminal messaging area, it could be that both of them were meant to complement one another. Experiment 4 was theta radiation, because it wouldn't be vault if they weren't trying to kill you with a thing they claim they can protect you from. Jesus. They even modified a reactor to do it. The wanted effects are not too bad, except maybe the paranoia related one. The last experiment is where things get interesting. Experiments 1 to 4 were to be applied long term to 5 employees. Hodgson, Grunner, Dallas, Bartleby and Langston. This once again highlights that even the employees who thought they were in the know were sometimes part of the experiments they themselves thought they ran. We can then assume that Bateman was the only one who knew everything. Now, to listen to the holotape here entitled Project Consumer Guidance. This is Luis Bateman reporting on week two of Project Consumer Guidance. Civilian employees are starting to experience extreme headaches similar to the previous study. Luckily, the associated depression has not surfaced, so suicides aren't expected to be an issue yet increase in subliminal messaging frequency continues to have little to no effect on many visitors. But the speed at which the park staff was affected does show that some level of success has been achieved. I recommend moving forward with the audio tours for the next project. Perhaps a higher frequency of messaging fed directly into a consumer who can focus will be more effective. So it seems that the civilian employees were quite a large focus, and prolonged exposure is definitely affecting them. However, he said depression is not an issue. Not sure if that means it hasn't been an issue with anyone at all, or just it hasn't surfaced with these five. And if so, that's pretty odd. It ends with saying it's not affecting the visitors, but if left long enough, such as with the employees, it does seem to affect them. Later accounts show it does affect people, 
so it seems that this log took place before all that. Now, into the hydroponics. Enjoy a rich, varied diet, locally sourced from your colony's own hydroponic gardens. Just smell the freshness. I think the smell the freshness part was to get everyone to breathe in the not subtle at all pheromones being sprayed directly into your face. As you can see, the effects of this area are a decrease in perception, which doesn't really link up with the expected results we see on the terminal for this. As we move into the actual garden, much of it is wrecked. The only fruit still growing on a plant is mutt fruit, so once again anything in this vault once growing has been mutated to quite a large degree. Now, on to research. And with vault Tech's cutting-edge science and technology, you can rest assured that your colony will have the resources to face any challenge. Now this room is the only one so far, on the tour anyway, where we find a body in the main area. From the looks of it, they died while about to have a smoke. Now given that this was in the middle of many experiments, and the bombs, really anything could have killed this person. The reactor leaking the theta radiation can be found in the other room, along with another spacesuit and a star core. Look at how they modified the reactor. They just opened up the lid for fuck's sake. The radiation decreased our agility by one, which actually matches up with the extreme fatigue described in the experiment. Now for the exit. A thrilling new adventure awaits. Imagine hundreds of colonies spread throughout the galaxy and beyond. So the spiel for this was hundreds of colonies spread throughout our galaxy, and possibly even others, which is ridiculous, even by vault standards. I mean, that would take millennia to achieve. It's also here that we find the last two spacesuits. If you turn left at them, you come to this little room where all the planet models were set up. They must weigh a shitload if they broke the floor like this when they fell from the ceiling. We can also find a traitor here, which could explain some things missing, such as Bateman's arm. The robots probably killed them. Now, on to the proper exit. Imagine a future among the stars. Magical. Vault -tech. For more information, or to sign up for the Vault program, please see a sales associate. Thank you, and enjoy your day here at Nuka World. So first off, the medallion can be found to the left. Second, it appears they were also using this whole tour to push their sign-ups for the vault Tech program. Looking around this room, we can see a lot of desks in various states of being bajaxed. To the right here, we can find the corpse of Woman, and based on her position, she definitely worked here. In fact, I would hazard to say that this whole area was based around vault -Tech seals. You can actually see some of the questions for the goat on the walls here. So something with vault -Tech was carried out here. Across the room, we can find a terminal, and it gives us insight into some of the vault -Tech seals activities carried out here. So this was a seals desk, and the first entry is in the seals instructions. The focus seems to be about getting people's questions answered as quickly as possible, with some strange three steps program. The part at the end shows that whoever wrote these entries knew the truth about this place, but that the sales reps were ignorant. The second entry is on Introduction. It focuses on the first impression. Touch their hand, show your teeth, and make a shit joke. Everyone knows. The filthier the joke, the better. The 28% increase sounds made up to me. I mean it's common sense that if you're nice to people, they're more likely to listen to you. That's how you get them. The third entry is on Initiation. This is where they trick people into buying into a vault. The part about not pestering people is a lesson that a lot of seals people really need to learn. A bit of fear mongering is how they top it off, even though, ironically, much of it was in fact correct. Finally, integration, where you become part of the vault tech family, which is quite incestuous because they completely fuck you. All these forms should be massive red flags to most sensible people, but clearly some people still fell for it. The last part covers the places where all the forms are meant to be submitted. We can actually find these bins next to the desk, and oddly enough, they're empty. Could be just no one was dumb enough to buy into this, or they emptied them. The key next to this one allows you into the employee area. 
So that was an interesting and refreshing look into their process, which is too innocent and simple for my liking, I suspect shenanigans. Another dead body can be found in the corner here, but they are likely just another employee filling out forms. Next, we head down these stairs and emerge into this train wreck of a room that actually links up with the model residential area. So as you can see, there was shit, and it did indeed go down. Some by knocked his desk over, and the other one died at his. Since one of them managed to do that, they may not have died immediately as a result of the bombs, or at least not straight away, as there is some food lying around that could suggest they were stuck here. The terminal here gives us some information that could explain this. It belongs to J. Hodgson, if that is how the name is pronounced, one of the people that were to be experimented on in Bateman's terminal entries. The first entry is his first day on the job. He thinks it's easy, and he's getting paid much more than he was in Washington. Yay! He also gets free rides. Life seems like it's going well for Owl Hodgson, ATM. Entry 2 seems to have been an early victim of the experiments. Not sure what one it could have been though. Perhaps it was the residential one. This does show that Hodgson had no idea what was going on. His third journal entry is in relation to Bateman's key that can get you into the observation area. This is also the first time we see evidence that the experiment was having an effect on Hodgson, as it appears he is beginning to exhibit anger problems. He was close when he guessed it had something to do with the Earth system. His second last entry shows that he's starting to lose it. He has no memory of writing the last entry. The drinking could have actually been him, as there was some in his wastebasket, or Bateman could have planted it. Given the time difference between these two entries, I think these occurred in April, meaning the second was in February and the first in January. Finally, his last entry. It seems to be from the 30th of May. He's beginning to notice that the exhibit itself is strange, as people are exhibiting odd and erratic behaviour. Except the naked guy. I defend his right to let it all just hang. The symptoms he exhibits also seem to be getting worse, nosebleeds especially. Bateman keeps trying to disarm him and tell him it's all fine. Now after this there are no more entries, but we can assume he kept working here, as his entries are also here. Would also explain the drink in the wastebasket and the knocked over table. Perhaps the bombs were simply the final straw that put him over the deep end. Looking around, I'm not sure where the pheromones, various waves and the sound could have been coming from, but from what we see here, and what we will see, they were indeed present. In the room next to these boyos, we find another room, this time with scientists, also dead. The first one is sprawled out of their chair, and the second is dead in theirs. With a pistol beside them? Hmm. Yeah, I'm totally sure they didn't kill anyone or themselves. <laughs> As you can see, one of them is also missing an arm. Once again, could be a reused asset, or could have been someone looting their pit boy from them. Anyway, let's have a look at the terminal of the first skeleton. So this was Langston's terminal, once again another person that was to be experimented on, and they were a subliminal suggestions tech, so the residential area was their domain. Their first daily observation is about an increase in the frequency of the messages, possibly as a result of the hall tape Bateman made. There appears to be different grades of tapes, like blue and orange, but the new blue tape is producing no noticeable differences. They are going to try the orange tapes. Entry the second is on the orange tape. People are much more susceptible to suggestion. They think it has something to do with the fight or flight response of the brain. Which seems dangerous to me, but sure, vault -tech. Also, people are getting addicted to the signals. To me, anyway, that would suggest a very lucrative scheme, but they do not seem to have utilised it. The third entry shows what happens when a, a fucking idiot's in charge. Not surprisingly, things eventually turn violent. Two women got in a fight. They're swapping back to the blue tapes. At least Langston is sensible enough to fear the technology. Also, they have red tapes, which I'm assuming will have the same effect as those SIM cards from Kingsman. The last entry is on... well, just Langston being an asshole. He said he was scared of it, then started doing it again because he got bored. People started doing weird shit again, except the pissing guy. I defend his right to let the stream take him, where it may. He says he will send the tape straight to headquarters to analyse it further. Sounds to me like he just wanted to send them to his mate to get a laugh. So Langston was a bit of an asshole, and was in on the testing to a certain extent. The banks of screens here are likely where he watched everything play out. His entry showed no adverse effects to himself, which cannot be said about his friend here, who we shall now look at the terminal of. So this was Grunner's terminal, another person that was to be experimented on, and he was in charge of the theater radiation. His first entry is when they get it set up, and they claim it causes no permanent effects, which 
I'm dubious about. Anyone more knowledgeable about this, feel free to weigh in. Also, this entry makes it sound like they were using ionizing radiation at one point, and if so, fucking hell. Also, they did a shit job as they left the lid open. Entry 2 shows that everything was going according to plan for once, with the effects lining up with what Bateman said, and making me a bit angry, cause kids, and babies, no way that shit is good for them. Entry 3 once again shows how giving a person easily bored dangerous job can be bad. All the readings are the same, and Bateman wants nothing changed. He wants it all long term and constant. Remember now, Gruner was part of the experiment as well as the people on the tour. Entry 4 is when the effects begin to show for Grunner. He starts passing out, and then he figures out that he may be part of the experiment as well. Oddly enough, it doesn't seem like he ever found out where it was coming from, and Langston was never affected either, which is also quite odd. Entry 5 is when the paranoia sets in, and he starts suspecting poor Isle Langston as well. Then he goes full survivalist, and locks himself in, and, and he has a gun. Oh fuck. The last entry is exactly what you would expect, and I assume it happened either the next day or the same day, but the bombs did hit. Also yes, you are being paranoid, but you were also right. Now Langston said seal the vault, which makes me wonder if that was actually possible. Well, he shot him, which explains why Langston's dead. He says his head hurts and he feels dizzy, which means that the claims the radiation were short term were probably bullshit. He then killed himself. Now don't get me wrong, he deserved it, especially since he knew what they were doing to the people. But I have to wonder why Grunner and Hodgson were affected, but Langston was not. The other two people involved here were Dallas and Bartleby, which are likely the person dead in their chair and the other one dead in the locker room, both likely when the bombs hit or just shortly after. We have no idea if they two were unaffected, or if they even knew what this place really was. Just past the corpse in the locker room, we can pass underneath the stairs and find the remains of someone else. Could be another employee, or someone who was doing inventory with all this stuff when the bombs hit. Their bodies all over the place however. A little further down we come to the door that leads into the atrium with the trees. It is, like we said, mostly used for storage, and as a result, has nothing else of interest for us. So this was vault Among the Stars, a ride in the galactic zone of Nuka World. At the start, it seems like it was just a way for vault to push more seals on people. As we saw in the very end, this was part of the purpose of this place. However, it had a darker, more secretive experiment. One that even some of its employees were not in on. In many of the exhibits, they tested a variety of different things, from theta radiation to pheromones. And then they documented the various adverse effects these had on visitors. Little did many of the employees in charge know, they too were part of the experiment. In fact, Bateman seems to have been the only one who wasn't subject to it. We saw the results of this, with one of the employees going insane and killing themselves and one other, and another was prone to anger and blackouts. We don't know how long they survived after the bombs hit. In the end, this place just goes to show that even when it's a fun amusement park, vault will find a way to ruin it. The sneakiest experiments vault have carried out to date, and the people subject to them. I hope you liked this look at all of it. If you did like it, give the video a like. And if you want regular updates, subscribe. Any suggestions for lore or future videos should be left in the comments below. Better yet, go onto my subreddit, so we can discuss them in more detail. It's linked in the description. If you wish to, you can support me on Patreon. A pound or a dollar, I ask for no more. Any rewards you would like to see there that I don't have, message me and I will take a look. Follow me on Twitter or Facebook to get regular updates or have a wee chat. Any business you wish to discuss, email me at nthapple.business at gmail.com and I will get back to you as soon as possible. I hope you enjoyed the episode and I hope to see you in the next one. And until then, goodbye.